Hello and welcome to this Dr. Ross Maths Key Skill video on solving quadratic inequalities of the form x squared plus bx plus c is greater than zero or x squared plus bx plus c is less than zero. So these are quadratic inequalities, they're called inequalities because we've got a less than symbol or greater or equal to symbol etc. And they're quadratic because we've got something x squared plus something x plus something. There's an x squared term in here, that's the key thing here. Now, if you're watching this video, I'm assuming you already know how to solve a quadratic equation. So if I had x squared plus 3x minus 4 equals 0, then you should know how to be able to solve that. Because we're going to do a very similar method here. So step one in both cases is going to be to get 0 on one side. Now, that's already done in both cases. In the next video, we'll look at cases where you don't have 0 on one side. But I've already got 0 on one side, so that's OK. Tick. Step two is to factorise the quadratic. So these are exactly the same steps as solving a quadratic equation for the moment. It's only the end that's going to be different. So let's factorise this left-hand side. Remember, to factorise a quadratic, we need two numbers which add up to give 3 and multiply to give minus 4. What are those two numbers? Well, they're 4 and minus 1. So it's going to be x plus 4 and x minus 1 as a factorization. We've still got this less than 0. Don't accidentally replace the less than with equals. Now step 3 is to sketch the quadratic. So sketch y equals the left hand side. And again in a previous video I look at how we can sketch quadratics like y equals x plus 4 times x minus 1. So let's draw this. We want to sketch y equals x plus 4 times x minus 1. Now, for the sake of time, I'm just going to recap what we did in that video. But basically, if you made each of these equal to 0, if x plus 4 was 0, then x would be minus 4. So it cuts the x-axis at minus 4. Because if you think about it, look, if x was minus 4, then you have minus 4 plus 4, which is 0, and 0 times anything would give you a y value of 0. And look, the y value is 0 here. And then if x minus 1 was 0, you get a solution of x is 1, so we put 1 on the x-axis. So you put these solutions on the x-axis. And then, because it's a positive quadratic, it's a positive x-squared term, remember it's going to be a smiley face shape. We don't care about the y-intercept for the purposes of solving the quadratic inequality. And then the final step is to read your graph to get your solutions. Now this is a complicated bit and people get very confused by this. Let's look at what we're solving. We're saying this thing here, the y value, is less than zero. So we look on our graph, where on this line is the y value less than zero? Well, we can see in this bottom bit, that's where the y value, not the x value, the y value is less than zero. So I'm going to highlight that bit of the line. That's where the y value is less than zero. And what can we say about the x values in this region? Well, we can see the x value is between minus 4 and 1. So that's what we write. We say that the x value is between, so between minus 4 and 1. And notice, by the way, that this should be consistent with that symbol. So if that's less than, that should be, so if that's less than, that should be less than. If that was less or equal to, that should be less or equal to. Now let's do another one to hopefully lose state further. We want to get 0 on one side. We've already done that. 0 is on one side. We next factorise a quadratic. Now, can we see these have a common factor of k? So we can just factorise this out. So this is a single bracket factorisation, not a double bracket factorisation like over here. Now, k times what is k squared? What's well, k? And k times what is minus 4k? It's minus 4. Let's just repeat that. The greater equal to 0. So we've done step 2. Then we sketch y equals the left-hand side. So we sketch y equals k times k minus 4. Now I'm just going to imagine this as x rather than k because it doesn't really make a difference. So this is k instead of x. Now we imagine we're solving this equals 0. So either k is 0, which gives us this point here, or k minus 4 is 0, so k is 4. So we put 4 on the k-axis, just like we put the minus 4 and 1 on the x-axis here. And again, it's a positive quadratic. It's positive 1 k squared, so it's going to look like that. Now, step 4 is to read the solutions of the graph. Now, we've drawn y equals k brackets k minus 4. So if y is equal to k brackets k minus 4, we're saying that y is greater or equal to 0. 
where on this graph is y greater or equal to zero? Well, we can see the y value is positive here. And we can also see the y value is positive here. So we're interested in these two parts of the graph. Now, what can we say about the k value or the x value in this region of the graph? Well, if x or k is zero here, then k is less than zero left of here, so for this part of the graph. So k is less than zero, or, or you can use a comma, we can see for this part of the graph, the k value is greater than four. Now, I've made a slight mistake here, actually, because I said this symbol should be consistent with that. So if that's greater or equal to, this should be greater or equal to, and that should be less than or equal to. So if that's a non-strict inequality, as we call it, then these, again, should be non-strict. So these are the two forms you should get. Now, when you have a positive quadratic, basically, if you have a less than symbol, so less than zero, then your quadratic should be a sort of betweeny thing. So x is between two values. Whereas if you have greater equal to zero or greater than zero, then you get the tails of the graph, and you should be using the word or in between. So these are two different cases. Less than zero or less than equal to zero, you get the sort of betweeny case. And if you have greater than zero or greater than equal to zero, you have the two tails, and you should have x or k is less or equal to something or x or k is greater or equal to something.